Success without sacrificing your mental well-being with Eva Medelek. Do you ever feel burned out trying to succeed in life? Sometimes we sacrifice our mental well-being to achieve our goals. Would you like to learn some secrets of successful life when you could actually also live happy and healthily? Give us a thumbs up. You have a treat today. Welcome to Happy and Healthy Mind. My name is Dr. Rosina, and over the last 20 years, I have been serving as a medical doctor specializing in psychiatry, a best-selling author, and a transformative speaker. I believe our mind is the software that runs the hardware of both our brain and our body. Therefore, I share practical tips for your mental fitness so you can live your best life, function at your highest potential, without burnout and unnecessary suffering. Please consult your healthcare professional for any specific advice. But if you find this content helpful, then join our mission of ending preventable suffering and suicides by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live their best life with health and happiness. And I'm so glad our guest today is Eva Madelik. Thank you, Eva, for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Rosina. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you. And Eva is a certified high performance coach, international speaker, and author. She has coached both men and women in areas of personal development, leadership, and mastering habits for success in their personal and professional life. So let's hear Eva's story and see what nuggets we can learn today. So Eva, tell us, uh, why did this topic become important in your life? How was life before you applied some of the tools that you're going to teach us today? Well, there was a time in my life when I had just turned 50 years old, guys. That was about 10 <laughs> years ago, where um, I realized that I wanted more from my life. I wanted not to be in a job. I was working as a dental hygienist for right. over 30 years at that point. And, you know, that profession can burn you out and give you, you know, back pain, neck pain and all of that. And, you know, there was a time right at my 50th birthday where I was downsized and I got cut and I realized, you know what, I don't want to have another job. It's humiliating at the age of 50 to be out there interviewing. So I set out on this entrepreneurial journey. And boy, what a ride that's been. I didn't know what I could do at the age of 50. I didn't want to go back to school. But what I did do was I learned how to become a real estate investor. Mm. And, you know, with most entrepreneurs, we're really juggling our full-time job while we're building the entrepreneurial business to sustain us, right? right and so, right. of course, that meant I was working day, night, night and day and weekends. I was studying in the morning, going to work all day, studying at lunch, coming home and and studying and making offers some more, working on the weekends. And, you know, over time, I became stressed out burnt out and overwhelmed. You know, my health was affected. My mood, my mindset, my emotional and mental well-being was certainly stretched. You know, I was always, I like to call it Miss Cranky Pants. You know, I was frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just, you know, it came to a point where my husband wouldn't even come into the office because I was such in that high achieving workaholic mode that he started to avoid me. And eventually, we started to have some serious communication problems in our relationship. And so, you know, I remember, we took a trip to Mexico to try to bring the joy and connection back to our, our marriage. And it was a beautiful trip. And when we got back, he went out to walk the dog and I went in the kitchen. And I saw his phone and I was like, oh, he's supposed to send me some pictures. So I picked up his phone and my heart dropped. My heart literally dropped. What I saw on his phone was evidence that he was falling in love with another woman. And it literally was a punch in the gut. And it was in that moment, Dr. Rosina, that I realized that I couldn't continue on the way I had been 
been operating. You know, I bore a hundred percent responsibility for my 50% of that relationship and who I was being in that relationship was not creating a relationship with my husband that we both deserved and desired. And it was in that moment that I decided to take responsibility, confront him. And, you know, yes, I, I was hurt. I was disappointed. I was upset. I was afraid more than anything that I would lose everything that we had built, you know, in our lives and in our businesses. But I knew that I had to take a deeper look at myself and change who I was being so that I could have the relationship I wanted and deserved. So you had a big wake up call. It was a two by four to the head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I would love to learn some of the tools. But before we go into the tools, tell me after you applied these tools that you're going to be talking about today, how did life change? Because I know what you're describing is like, you know, some people may just kind of collapse or give in or like, you know, become really depressed. That's when, you know, I, I see a lot of uh, people uh, getting, uh, becoming my patients. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. yes. Um, yeah. Well, you know, after we took full responsibility and did the work and the work was hard, you know, we had a choice at that point. We could either turn that breakdown into our relationship into a breakup or we could break through and we decided to break through. And on the other side of that breakthrough, I actually knew when we made that decision, I'm like, this is going to be better. The relationship that we're going to create and build now is going to be better than the relationship we had when, you know, we were first dating and in the honeymoon phase and the early parts of our marriage. I knew that it would be better if we were doing the work and applied the works to our lives. And we did. And so what I can share with you now is that we're together. We are partners in life and in business. And our way of communicating is so much easier now. You know, there's less stress, there's less frustration, there's less me being short-tempered and frustrated and disappointed. It's less less of me being, um, having these high expectations and getting disappointed, if you will. And we're more of, you know, it's a good mesh now. And the important thing is that we don't live in the past. We really take each day, day by day and live in the present. And because we're living in the present, we're able to bring that joy and happiness and connection into our present life and situation. And the businesses are going well. Our lives are so going like, well. It also help your professional success? How did it help yes. your professional success? Yes. Well, first of all, I stopped being a perfectionist and a pain in the butt. I stopped <laughs> trying. I stopped trying to do everything myself. Uh -huh. And so I was able to take that pressure, you know, uh -huh. when I was in that doing it all myself so that I could have the success that I wanted, I had such back and neck pain, I had migraine headaches. Um, I was always like I said, feeling the stress and the burnout and the overwhelm of just having so much to do. And so little time in which to do all of it. And, you know, now I could just like, I feel lighter. <laughs> mm. I don't feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. I've learned how to find more joy mm -hmm. in what I do. Because when you're in that rat race on the spinning wheel, you don't really take time to enjoy and be happy. And, you know, even when you do take time off, you're still thinking about what you need to do next. And right. when I get home, like we, we just took a, a month off and we're in Germany for the month. And, you know, for a month, I think I worked two days because I had some client obligations, but I was just like, you know what, the world is not going to stop spinning if I'm not there always doing, 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 I need to take more time to just be and enjoy these moments with with the people that are important to me because right. you know the years that we've just experienced here you know tomorrow is never guaranteed and i needed right. to really to stop and enjoy the life i have 
Right, right, yeah. Yeah, sometimes we become human doings rather than human beings. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it'd be lovely for us to, our audience, to learn some of the tools that helped you. So in our short time, do you have a few golden nuggets, uh, secrets that you could share with us that may help our audience? You know, improve, succeed without sacrificing the relationship, without sacrificing their mental well-being. You know, there are five things that you can do so that you don't experience this type of burnout that affects you in so many levels, because you know, when you don't feel good, you don't show up as your best self, right? And so it affects everyone around you. So the first thing I would tell people is to be selfish. And, and yeah. here's what I mean by that. Your success depends on your ability to prioritize your values, and what's important to you without feeling guilty. Most of us are trying to do everything to please everybody else and to get ahead and we lose sight on what's important to us in the process. And that affects our emotional and our mental energy for sure. The second thing would be to stop trying to do everything. You have time to give yourself permission to ask for help, to ask for support and take some things off of your plate, not that you remove them from your life, but you don't have, you know, you may remember there was a commercial in the late 1970s for a perfume called Anjali. And the woman would come out singing, I can bring home the bacon, fry it up <laughs> in a pan and never let you forget you're a man because i'm a woman and we have this idea that in order to have it all we have to be it all and do it all too so i'm telling you give yourself permission to stop trying to do everything okay and you are a beautiful singer too oh thank, thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like to have fun yeah. uh the third thing was stop trying to find balance we're killing ourselves trying to find work-life balance right and when you look at a scale that's perfectly balanced, the number on the scale is zero. And so your attempt at trying to balance everything is zeroing out your results. You have the power to control what side of the scale to add or subtract based on your priorities and your values. So stop trying to balance everything. It's killing us. I, uh, I say before, seesaw. I say seesaw. So sometimes, yes. you know, it's this way, sometimes it's this way, but that seesaw would help bring attention to both aspects. It, it doesn't have to be straight flat, but for me, balancing means, you know, giving pri having time for different things and having boundaries and taking care of that's all the, the aspects key. in a CISO matter. Yeah, and that's the key. Not only creating and setting boundaries, but communicating the boundaries. You know, part of my problem was I didn't communicate the boundaries that I had set and people were stepping all over them and it frustrated me. Well, it was my own darn fault because I wasn't telling people what I was, what was important to me, what I was valuing, what I was trying to create. And so because of that, we have to learn to say no so that we can honor and respect our boundaries. And so if our boundaries, I mean, if our actions aren't moving forward, our priorities and what's important to us, then we have to learn to say no. Otherwise, we're all over the place trying to do everything we can to please everybody else. And we end up burnt out and overwhelmed because of it. And the, th the fifth thing I would say is incorporate daily habits that generate energy. The energy you bring to your relationships is the most important. And we, when we talk about energy, a power plant doesn't have energy. It generates energy. That's so it's true. up to us to generate energy. What, what gives you the emotional energy, the mental energy, and the physical energy to be on your A game? And so when we incorporate daily habits, whether it's movement, whether it's meditation, whether it's stopping and resting the brain, whether it's eating for fuel, not just to satisfy hunger, eating things that bring us energy and don't weigh us down and make us heavy we get to control that and generate the energy in our lives 
Let me ask audience at this time, what is one thing that generates energy for you? Why don't you jot down in the comment section and let's generate ideas for other people who would be watching the program later in terms of what are your energizing activities, energy generating activities. I use a concept called uh, emotional coping account and I call them deposits in your yeah. emotional co coping account. The activities that uplift you, that expand you, that energize you. You know, I have a list of all the deposit lists. So sometimes I can look at and today what deposit I want to put. It could be mm. as simple as, you know, I want to take a tub bath today or I want to yeah. look at the trees or I want to go for a little walk or call a friend or, you know, maybe cry. <laughs> sometimes whatever you want to kind of, uh, for mm -hmm. me, is writing down, so getting it out. So mm -hmm. whatever is your deposit whatever is your energizing, energy generating activity, share in the comment section. All right, Eva, is, uh, you can continue. Well, those are the five things that, that I have. And, you know, I have my own generating, energy generating habits that I incorporate. And, what are and I, those? Just, I wanna leave one powerful nugget with people that is a powerful energy generating habit that most of us don't do. We sit down at our computer at our job and we work for two to three hours straight without taking a break. I would challenge anyone who wants to generate more energy in their day so that your family is not getting what's left over of you at the end of the day is to only work on one task for 50 to 60 minutes and then take a five minute break. And that five minute break could be drinking water, getting up and going, you know, to, to drink water, um, jumping jacks, sitting and closing your eyes for five minutes and, and doing some sort of release meditation from the, the mental energy that maybe was um, spent or, you know, not everything brings good energy into our sphere, right? Um, I have one where I'll just go downstairs and chase the dog and throw her toy a little bit and then that was some movement and that's a win-win for her. She's happy that mommy got off the computer and we're having fun. So every 50 minutes, give yourself a little energy recharge. And so that could, you know, move, release, whatever is for you. Make sure you stay hydrated and you're going to end the day as strong as you started it. Yeah, when, when uh, we, we are so used to charging our phones and our iPads and our earbuds and all, you know, computers. And so we need to start charging our brain <laughs> and our mind and our body. Yeah. Well, if you look at a NASCAR race, right, those cars are racing around the track at really high speeds, trying to win without crashing and burning. And then you'll see the lead car get off as they're leading the race to stop for a pit stop because pit stops are necessary to finish the race without breaking down. We don't do that enough for ourselves. Right. You know, right. at the pit stop, they're changing the tires before they go flat. They're filling up the gas tank before they run out of gas. I don't really know cars, but they're doing all their magic on the car so that it can continue to operate at peak performance. But most of us will maybe eat breakfast or have coffee in the morning and go, 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 go until we're sputtering on our last, breath of gas to the end. And so if you take it from any kind of car race, you got to stop for those pit stops so that you finish as strong as you start, but you don't break down in the process. That's so true. That's so true. And and a lot of times, you know, the, the best the best team that is working on that car and the best gas quality that you're putting in that car and the best parts that you're putting that defines how far that that would de that would determine success or failure right yeah so similarly if you are not putting good nutrition in your body that's the fuel for all the cells to work if you don't provide that rest so that it can function better and if you are not providing in in, in terms of the the days and weeks and months if you're not giving proper sleep proper nutrition proper mm -hmm. exercise pro proper social connectedness and there's some quietening exercises these are the five wellness practices that are actually known 
to reduce the depression and anxiety by 30 to 40 percent. And they're also protective for both mind and body. Yeah, the quality of food that you're putting in the body, the, the quality of sleep, these and exercise, these determine your ability to stay happy and healthy while succeeding in all aspects of life. Because, you know, if somebody succeeds in their, let's say, business, but fail in their relationship or do really well in the relationship, but uh, lose in, the, in their career, they, they remain unsatisfied. So mm -hmm. for, a, for a healthy and happy life, I think both areas need to be addressed appropriately. Yeah, it's a both and. It's not an either or. You can have mm -hmm. success without the sacrifice, but you don't have, you will have to sacrifice something, but you won't have to sacrifice everything and determining what are the right things to sacrifice that support nice. your priorities and values is you can't say yes to everybody. You know, mm -hmm. you really have to be focused and be clear on what your values and priorities are. Right. That philosophy, first things first, if you don't determine what are your top three priorities, then you will be doing the lower priorities first, and then you'll be sacrificing your higher priority items. Mm -hmm. So something would get sacrificed if you don't choose uh, what to focus on. So that's so true. Yeah. And you can focus on other people's priorities too. That's what happens when you open up your email inbox uh -huh. and you start to consume before you create. And so another thing you can do is do the, the outbound emails that you need to get out that focus on your priorities before you're reacting to all the requests that come in for you for from email too. Right. That's another way that generates more energy because then you feel this sense of, okay, I got what's important to me now. And now let me spend a certain amount of time, not three or four hours, but 15, 20 minutes seeing if there's anything urgent that I need to respond to that may not be a priority of mine, but that I can get off my plate at this time. So yeah. it really is your seesaw act, like you said, right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And I've been experiencing this quite frequently. So anytime, so I usually write my journal in the morning. I start my day with the gratitude journal. But you know, the phones are so like, you know, they alert you, there's a text, there's a ping, if somebody has sent a message to you, and it keeps on bugging. So anytime, any day, when I pick up the phone, and I start, oh, okay, so once I open it, then I want to see my schedule. And then I want to see this, and I want to see that, and you get distracted. And then lo and behold, you know, your half an hour is gone. Now it's time to get ready and run around and, you know, do all the things. And my my journal is kind of left, left on the side. I feel kind of uh, ungrounded and a little uh, disorganized. And like you said, I am addressing other people's priorities. But the days when I am more conscientious about addressing my needs first even if i get a text i try to just kind of do the text and turn the phone around so then i don't get distracted and i do my journal and when i do my journal i do my priorities of the day and mm. so when i do my priorities of the day now i feel like it is my direction so you know we have choices so if we don't choose how we want to spend our day than other people. Your circumstances are going to choose how you are going to spend your day. So that's so true. And I've been really experiencing that. And so I've been intentionally trying to not get distracted in the morning. So there's a there's a lot of tools that we can continue to share. But uh, because of the shortness of time, let me ask people to reach out to you if they need to. You can reach Eva's uh, website at Eva Metallic. Dot com. Uh, can you spell it for the people who are not watching and just listening, Eva? It's E V A M E D I L E K, Eva Medelec.com. Thank you so much. Can you tell me what tools that you are describing if people don't follow, if they don't focus on protecting and not sacrificing their mental well being in pursuit of success, what problems they can get into? Well, you know, have you ever said, you know, if I only had time, I don't have enough time, I wish I had time. Well, you know, there's this famous bumper sticker I once read that God put me on earth to accomplish a certain number of things. And right now I'm so far behind that I'll never die. So if you want to generate more time, 
Uh, if you want to protect your energy and generate energy, you know, these, these habits of high performance are vital. Otherwise, you're going to have, um, you know, low energy, your health is going to suffer, your well being and your mood is going to be impacted or be in breakdown, as I say, and your relationships, just like mine was, are in danger of not being the, the best, most fulfilled, connected, juicy relationships that you want to experience on earth. You know, you will pay the cost of putting yourself last. Hmm. Yes, so profound. So do you have one sentence uh, take home message that you want people to apply right away? I do. I just I, I would really say it's time to give yourself permission to stop doing everything and to stop looking for work life balance because balance is not equal and you get to control what side of your scale to adjust and add to and subtract as you see fit. So take back control of your life. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I want to share a gift that Eva is sharing with our audience today. It's wonderful. You've heard a lot of things that you don't want to be doing to sabotage. So there's a quiz that Eva is sharing with us. Eva, can you tell us in a sentence what would they get in this quiz? Well, in the quiz, you're going to identify what is sabotaging your success, you know, based on your um, your habits, your patterns, your beliefs and behaviors and what you can do about it so that you can stop sabotaging and have success without the sacrifice. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And if you want to get this gift, please head on to happyandhealthymind.com. And over there, you can sign up for all the gifts that we share in this program. If you would like to get links to resources and reminders, you can text us on number 38470. Send the word joyful, J-O-Y-F-U-L. And we would be happy to send you the links for these resources and reminders for future program. And now it is time for special of the day. And so the special of the day today is for improving the relationship. You know how uh, we are talking about there are, there are habits that can sabotage that uh, your health and your relationship, and there are habits that you can build that, that, that can help you improve. So there are uh, three tips that I usually share with my patients that really help them. Would you like to learn those? I would. Please. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let me share them in, in short. The first tip is when you're doing your morning gratitude, and I hope all of us, all of you are doing the gratitude journal now since I've been talking about it for a long time. So when you're doing your morning ritual, writing ritual or gratitude ritual, one of the techniques you can use is appreciating the relationships. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, close your eyes and think about five people in your life that you appreciate one by one bring their image to your mind and appreciate them being part of your life and then send them a positive thought send them a prayer send them a blessing for a wonderful day for health happiness in their life right and you'll see that as you send this kind loving wish for your for the people you care about you would also feel good all right so that's one tip the second tip during the day let's say you go to work or school or wherever you're going and you come back home many times like we were talking about after a very stressful day you come home really angry and upset and you come inside and although you were not able to scream at your boss at work but then you come home and you scream at your family member and then what are you doing you're kind of displacing your anger from work to home so instead, and then it affects your relationship and the relationship that you care the most about. So instead, when you come home, take one minute before entering home, okay? Mm -hmm. And let go of all the thoughts uh, about the work outside. And on the door, tell yourself, I'm going to meet the most important people in my life after a whole day. You know how when you go somewhere on vacation and you come back after a month and you how you come home and you greet your loved ones, right? How are you? And, you know, you go hug or whatever is your way of meeting your loved ones. Okay? You've been out the whole day. 
So standing on the door, think about, I'm going to meet the most important people in my life after a whole day and then greet them accordingly. And the third, when you are uh, going to sleep, make sure that you forgive all their mistakes and let go of anger. Don't go to sleep in anger and frustration because that would disturb your sleep and it would affect your relationship. So again, in the morning, send them appreciating, loving blessings. During the day when you come home, tell yourself, I'm going to meet the most important people in my life after a whole day. And then at night, forgive them all their mistakes and send them love as you go to sleep and you'll see that your relationship would start blossoming. So I leave you with the question, what do you choose today? Are you going to allow all the external issues coming to you, all the stressors that are coming to you, drain you? Or are you going to take the steps of doing energy boosting activities and focus on improving your relationship every day of your life, every day, you have new opportunity to make changes, make it the best day. On that note, stay safe, healthy and happy. Thank you, Eva, for joining us today. Till next time, Dr. Rosina.